Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Today, if you couldn't tell by uh, the writing on the chart there, the objective of this video is to be going over and locating the most likely uh, of market turning points. And what we have here is a chart I had that is of the NASDAQ, and this is before uh, we've had anything that's actually happened. So first, w when we're looking at this move, where is the market going to pull back to? Right. At this point in time, one of the biggest questions is, all right, well, you know, this this thing's starting to really pull back hard. Where is it likely to start running out of steam? So one thing that I like looking at when I'm looking at these these types of pullbacks is first off looking at who had control the last time around. So before this market started driving back to the downside, we of course, it helps that the data works. Let me see where I can get the data to work. There we go. Uh, so the last time that they had control was at 14,690 and above, and that's currently where the market is. So in order for the bulls to lose their grip, they've got to start backing off underneath this area, or they're gonna they're gonna have some difficulty. If we bring this all the way down to the bottom, up to the top, assuming that the data works, uh, which it doesn't, fantastic. Uh, let's not get any of this data to work. All right, there we go. Uh, so if we complete the entire thing from the bottom all the way up to the top, we can see that we may have already lost a POC. That's a bit problematic. So maybe they're looking for a bit of a deeper pullback. And that's where we want to start hunting back. Where is the market likely to start pulling back to? And then where is it going to start finding some resistance? We know right here is a potential area of interest. If they can complete in here, that POC is hovering in the middle. Uh, and of course, the data is messed up, but we know where it's at. They're right on top of it. If it breaks through this area, the next spot is likely going to be back just a bit further down over here. And that would be down to the 14,550s or so. So that would be the first area of interest if we start pulling through this zone. And we start pulling underneath it with a bull bar at the base and then a bear bar back through. And now we're starting to chop through. So the POC that was in this area, we've now kind of broken through it. It's become not necessarily irrelevant, but they've lost their ground. They're falling apart. So now we've got to find the next spot. Well, we know that the next zone of interest is at 50 quarter, but well, okay, that's awesome. Cool. Great. Whatever. But I, I need more than just one thing to tell me that I need to be going long or short in any specific location. We need something else. So if we're looking at this from that perspective, what else do we have? Well, in terms of maybe a falling, rising uh, support, resistance, etc., we have a maybe a megaphone bottom. Whoop. Almost lost it there. Let's go back a little further. There we go. Uh, so we've got a potential megaphone bottom that lines up pretty nicely with the bottom down here. Um, that's that's pretty solid. That's now two things that we have working for us. Uh, now, this can't be a megaphone unless it qualifies on the highs. And here we can see that, well, it did it a little bit sloppy. But when it broke back in, it held as resistance. That does hold as a megaphone top. So the likely objective, if they are going to fail off the top, especially with the attempt to break out above and roll lower, is likely going to be at least back down to the bottom of the megaphone. Uh, other things that may come into interest, uh, looking at a measured leg to the downside, a lot of times maybe an ABCD corrective phase is what the bulls are waiting for. So if we look at this, an ABCD, a one-to-one -one move would be right there. We are now starting to churn underneath that. Uh, typically when that happens, it's going to look to double itself down. So instead of a one, you'll go for a one and a half or potentially a two. And if we put a two down here, the two is, although, you know, it's a little bit underneath it, we're creating this very obvious zone, this barrier of interest down here that's going to become incredibly interesting, especially if the market continues to dive down. And now we have three possible things that line up. If we go backward a little bit further and we look at the continuation to the upside off of this most recent low, we can see that the initial cycle was not really much. It was an L2. It almost made it to an L3. And when they started breaking above the highs, it was an L1, L1 trend all the way up until this dip down here, which was an L3. Now, if an L3 is going to continue the trend to the upside, they're usually going to follow through with an L1. But in this case, they followed through with an L2. With the L2, we have a reversal off of the L2 and a rejection off of L1 and a cycle back down. Now we're churning through L3. The next logical point is going to be finding something that lines up in this area of confluence. And guess what lines up with this area of confluence? We've got ourselves the L5 zone, which is creating a fantastic area right on top of everything else. So now we've got four things that are telling us that this area is of interest. Now, with all of these things lining up, does that mean the market has to go down there? No, of course not. This, this, All of this analysis 
could be for nothing if it decided to just pivot off the lows and go screaming back to the upside. What we're trying to do here is find the most likely turning points. And the more things that we can stack around these areas, the better. Because this is telling us exactly where low probability but huge reward trades are going to show up. And these are a little bit higher on the low probability side because there are so many things lining up in one place. Now, there's never going to be a scenario where you have a low risk, uh, high probability, high reward type. That, the, that's the world of fantasy. That doesn't happen. But this does at least put the wind in our sails. It makes our life a little bit easier if we're trying to swing along this area. Because really, if buyers are looking to buy into the zone, they only have to risk, you know, about underneath that low. If it starts breaking underneath that, they're probably wrong. And the continuation to the upside is even at two to one inside of those highs and possibly even three to one back up to the top. So there's a lot of potential for the bulls to come in on this area of interest. Now, again, does it have to get down there? No, of course not. And we can actually see we're creeping a little bit lower. Now we're starting to get close. How many times have we had this before where it comes really close and then bounces without us, right? That happens. Welcome to life. Now, sometimes it does end up coming back. And once it starts coming back, we are now in a high probability or, well, a major zone of interest. I don't want to call it high probability and mess things up. So this is a major zone of interest. It's a major zone of confluence. And a lot of things are coming together. We're tapping the wedge lows. We're in the L5. We're at a double down on from the highs that measured move lower. We've got the previous POC as defense. We've got everything stacking up in this location. If bulls start demonstrating some popping here, which the next candle would suggest is happening, then realistically, it's we're starting to see maybe a shift. This is very early to the party, but as we continue a little bit further forward, now we've got another major rejection at the low. So when we see these very obvious clues, you know, again, I know it feels awkward to buy in this kind of movement down, but when we have this type of confluence together, it's tough to ignore. And as we zoom this a little further forward, we can see this is actually the current market time where all of that confluence has sent the market back up. And you remember what we were talking about as far as objectives for two to ones inside of those highs? Well, they went above that. So that's the importance of trying to figure out where these areas are. It's okay that you found one, but if you can start stacking up a lot of things in the same place, that's where you start really creating a solid one-two punch and possibly even a trade setup. Hopefully you found this one useful, interesting, entertaining. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below or shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Don't forget we have our giveaway going on. We're on our road to the 2,000 subscriber mark, so if you are not subscribed, what are you doing? Why? Come on now, subscribe. We're on our road to the 2,000 subscriber mark. We can't do it without subscribers. On the way there, we're doing our giveaway. Don't forget to comment on the giveaway video. That way you can take part in that as well, and everybody's got a chance to win on the way there. So, as always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Get in touch with me one way or another, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you had a fantastic trading day, and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.